Good evening. Happy Wednesday and welcome to my Wednesday night 12 by 12 layouts. My name is Barbara Ragsdale and I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And I will be here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in order to show you how to use Stampin' Up! products in order to create your 12 by 12 layouts. Hey Cindy! Hi Veronica! Welcome you guys! Hi Bonnie! So I'm glad you all could join me this evening. Uh, we are going to be doing... Hi Susan! We're going to be doing the second page layout to last week's. So my plan was every week to do one side or the other. And so tonight we're going to be doing the right side of the page. And I'll show, I'll reshow the uh, layout from last week once I get the camera pointed down. Um, and when I was deciding on what to do for prizes, I knew I couldn't do the layouts, so sorry you guys, uh, but tw mailing 12 by 12, anything 12 by 12 intact is pretty expensive. So I thought the next best thing would be is to do designer series paper. So I only had one pack of what I was doing for these layouts. And I didn't want to go through and it was already messed up and cut up a lot so but I did have plenty of the ornate garden which is very similar um, it does complement it because it has the sunflowers it has the daisies it's got all of the spring colors so what I'm going to be doing for the drawing every week is trying to find a designer series paper that really coordinates or maybe even the same designer series paper. So what I have here, I'll point it so that you can see everything when I when I get the camera pointed down. But I do want to welcome you for joining me and we'll go ahead and get started. So let me make sure I select the right wheel and let's get this pointed down. So thank you for joining me or if you are watching the replay, thank you so much for watching the replay. So here we go. All right. We'll bring this up a little bit that way anybody watching can at least scan that QR code if you are interested in visiting my website and placing an order for anything you might like today so here is the wheel for last week's um, video so let's see who won you get on the wheel when you like and you comment and when you share you have to type shared in the comments and that gets you entered twice. So let's see who wins. It's Corrine. Corrine, congratulations. Um, let me show you what you won. It's going to be a sampling of the Ornate Garden Designer Series paper. So there's going to be 12 and I cut it down to six by six sheets because it's a lot easier and a little less expensive to mail so I'm trying to show all the front sheets but for those of you that have not seen the ornate garden designer series paper that's the front side it's actually a specialty paper because when you flip it over you have all these other pieces that just have this really nice shine to them hi Carolyn thanks for joining us so congratulations, Corrine. I do have your mailing address, so I will get your prizes to you um, in the mail tomorrow. So let me set this aside. And then let me show you, for those that didn't watch last week's video, um, this is the layout that we did last week. Let me see if I can bring that up a little higher. Okay, and um, let's see. Hi, Sandra. That's my mother-in-law, you guys. <laughs> so this is the one that we did last week, and uh, daisies and I'm sorry, sunflowers just happen to be my mother-in-law's favorite flower, and she's on and she's watching, and I'm so glad. Um, but this is what we did last week. So we are going to be doing essentially almost the mirror image but not quite the mirror image for the other side so I am gonna leave this down because there's one piece that I want to match up with this right here 
and let me get my piece. And for those of you that don't know what the name of that designer series paper is, it's the Flowers for Every Season designer series paper, but it's only available in six by six. So I had to get really creative because normally scrapbookers like working with full 12 by 12 sheets. So I had to get real creative with what I was doing. So I'm just gonna butt these two sheets up to each other because this piece right here, I wanna put the one on this side on right up against that and then I can move the rest of this so I've got a piece of bumblebee and the measurement for that one is um, two by five and let me make sure I'm putting adhesive on the right side I'm just gonna stick this down with regular seal adhesive and I want this to be right up against this piece I just wanted to make sure that it's going to be even with the piece that's on the left side so that when you open the layout, those two pieces kind of come together in the middle. So now I can take that piece away and then I can finish assembling the rest of the layout. Now last week, I've got this designer series paper that I'm using, which is the same that's on the other side. So let's get this down first. This is gonna be our starting point. And you want this to be at the top corner. You want it to be exactly with the edge, the top right corner and the top right edge. And you wanna make sure you get it on straight or else everything will be crooked. And so let's get this on the other side. We're gonna make it look like we've got a full sheet of 12 by 12 that is um, on top of each other here. And it's okay that there's seams because we're gonna be covering that. That is the, that's a tip for you guys. So if you don't have 12 by 12 designer series paper, don't worry about it. You can do this little technique where we're gonna be stacking six by six on top of each other. Let me look at this. Oh, I need, I'm sorry, I need to put this piece down first. I'm looking at a picture of the layout because I don't do one of these before like I normally do with the cards. So this is a 11 inch strip by one inch strip and there's gonna be a gap at the top of the bottom. So you just wanna make sure that it's sort of an even gap. And if you need to, you can break out your ruler to make sure you've got an even little half inch from the top and the bottom. And then this designer series paper, I'm gonna put it right here in the middle to help cover up that seam. I don't know if y'all can see that high up. I don't know if my camera's high enough for you guys to see everything. And then the same thing on the bottom down here. I'm just gonna butt this one up against right here to help cover up that seam where the cardstock and this designer series paper meet. Okay. And then I have to make sure that I do this in the right order, you guys. So hold on. All right. So then now let's start up here at the top. I've got some mats. I'm gonna start doing some mats and I've got these in the order that I need to put them in. So this color cardstock is just Jade. And then this one is our cinnamon cider. So we're gonna be matting our cinnamon cider on here. And this particular mat, there's two mats that are exactly like this. And the Just Jade piece, let me see if I can do this and talk at the same time. The Just Jade piece is four and a quarter by three. And so the Bumblebee, I'm sorry, the Cinnamon Cider mats are gonna be a quarter inch less than that. So it's gonna be four by two and three quarters. And we're just gonna lay that directly down 
but I'm not going to lay it down like completely just yet. I just wanted to get that mat in place so I could make sure that I space everything properly. And then we have another piece. Where did it go? Here we go. We have this piece of um, bumblebee as well. I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back of that one. That one kind of went crooked. Um, but we're going to take that piece right there and we're going to cover up this these two seams where they come together. So you're not even going to know. People looking through your album won't even know that this is not a full 12 by 12 sheet of paper unless you tell them. Okay. So then now we have this little mat. And this mat and the other one that was on the other page that says, You Inspire Me, comes from the Memory and More Cards pack that coordinates with the flowers for every season designer series paper. Okay, and so we're going to mat this. This mat right here is a three by four. And so the bumblebee is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And we're just going to mat this piece right on top of there and I want this piece to pop up off my page so I'm gonna put a dimensional almost near the corner not quite so let's get a large dimensional and then make sure to peel off your little backings I hope I have enough glue dots. I have plenty of glue dots. I have five packages of glue dots, and get this, I opened up every single one of them, and all my glue dots are literally on the wrong side. And I've already gone through two packages like that, and I just can't do another one. So if anybody knows any tips out there on how to get the glue dots back on the other side without messing everything up, let me know. So, but I also have this little um, daisy. I am using the uh, medium daisy, and I already did the daisy. I want to say there's one, two, three, there's three petals on there, and then when I put them on, there's glue dots in between, and then I just turned them and then fluffed up the little petals. So I'm going to be putting that down there just to the right of this little saying right here. And then I do have two of the little leaves that I stamped in Just Jade. And these leaves come from the Celebrate Sunflowers bundle. It's those two little flowers right there. I want to pop those up too, but I'm going to use mini dimensionals because it's so little. I'll make sure my leaves go the right way. That one. And this one. We'll put them kind of going in opposite directions there. And I forgot to do one step before I put that down, but in the other one, I colored the center part with the blends and I used um, Light Daffodil Delight. And all I did was literally just colored the center. The darker you want it the more you go over it that's how you can get it darker that's all I did with that one okay and so now I have I want to do my center mat so I have this one right here which you could use as a journaling mat and you could put it several different ways however you want it but for this one I want this one to be flat so let me get some adhesive on this and this one actually is going to go right, I think I centered that one. That one's going to go right there. Okay. Because now I have a mat that I'm going to put in the middle, but I want this one to come off of the page. So this is a piece of Just Jade that is three and a half by... I'm sorry, this one's three and a quarter by four and a half. The piece of cinnamon cider is three and a half by four and three quarter. And we're just gonna mat that on top of here. So if you have a couple of different sizes of pictures, 
you can just scale them to whatever the sizes are on here and I'm not looking at the comments but if you joined me oops after I started thank you for joining us tonight let me get this off Okay, and we're just gonna center that right in the middle that way just a little bit of the flower show on both sides and a little bit of the uh, grid there's some grid that's part of that back here okay and then I do have another mat that is the same size as this one that was up here so and we're gonna do the same thing let me get that one matted and these two mats we're gonna actually put directly on the cardstock the white cardstock which by the way I know we had um, let me get this on here we had some issues with not having any whisper white available but by the way Stampin up was able to get us all stocked up with some basic white the new white that replaced the base the whisper white so that's awesome so and this one goes down here at the bottom so let me bring this up a little down a little bit more because I want to go ahead and do this one now that I have my middle put together and I can move my top and bottom pieces around so I do have this piece here but I also die cut two of the leaves these leaves from the die cut set and I went ahead and put um, I think there was some oh you know what I might have peeled it off but that's okay I'll use a glue dot to hold these down but what I want to do is let me get my glue dots it's just kind of awkward for me because we're having to use the opposite side of what I'm normally used to using but I'm gonna put a glue dot on the front right there and I want to attach one right here in that direction and then get a glue dot on the other side and I'm gonna attach one going in kind of the opposite direction they can overlap that's fine and then I did make a bow using the bumblebee gingham ribbon and then let me get a glue dot for that oops I'm out of glue dots I am out of glue dots okay hold on I've got yeah I'm out of glue dots let me get some more glue dots I hate opening up another pack because I know these are on the wrong side <laughs> I don't know why I seem to get the ones that are on the, the wrong side Okay, so we're gonna get a glue dot on the back of that bow. I wanna use two. I have something stuck to my finger. There you go. And then I'm gonna put it literally right here where those two pieces of leaf dye meet. Sticky, okay? And then I'm gonna put adhesive on the back and stick it down. You could certainly, if you were doing this layout, you could certainly use dimensionals to make it pop off the page. But I don't want everything to pop off the page. I just want some random things to pop. So we're going to put this one right here. And there's a reason there's some space right there. And then let me move this up just a little bit. Because I'm going to be working down on this mat right here. And for this mat, I've got a piece of the Bumblebee Gingham Ribbon, but I also have two of these die sprigs. And I'm going to do almost the same thing with these. So let me get some glue dots. If I can find the ones I lose. Here we go. I'm going to get a glue dot on the back. Well, it's really the front. Oops. Right there. And I'm going to put the glue dot right here. So I'm just sticking it to the back. There you go. I keep losing the little piece I pulled the glue dots off of. Okay. And then I want to use it. I want to do this by the front so I can see where I'm placing it. And then I want 
a piece to go right there. And then this little piece right here, I am going to need a glue dot to go in the middle because I'm going to fold it, but I want this to help hold down. So let me get a glue dot there, and I'm just folding that piece so it'll stay still for me while I'm doing this. And then I'm going to take another glue dot on the back where those two pieces meet and just put it right. I probably should have put that piece down first. Let's see. Oh, don't rip this. I want that to go back behind there. I should have put this piece down first. Let me see if I can pull that up a little bit. There we go. So I want it to look like that with just some ribbon and sprigs coming out on the side. And then I'm gonna put adhesive on the back of this one as well and lay this directly on my cardstock. And that'll help fill in this little area right here. Okay. And I am going to stamp in this one little area, and that's all the stamping that I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to be stamping in just jade. So let's open that, and I'm going to be stamping Know That You Are Loved. So just tap, tap, tap. Make sure you got good coverage. And then stamp in that area. There you go. That's all the stamping we're doing on this page. Okay, so we are almost done. Literally almost done. The only step left is, there's a couple of steps, but the last one is super simple. Oh, I forgot I had a heart. I punched out a little heart using the, uh, the lips punch. <laughs> It, from the hearts and kisses bundle. I wanted a little heart So I just used the heart from that and I punched it out in some cinnamon cider Because I wanted a little heart over here off the side and I just put that right there Just something nice and simple and Then the last piece is I went ahead and die cut the sunflower Just the outline. That's all I did and if you'll notice, there's some pieces missing, and I purposely, some of them fell out as I was pulling this apart, but I purposely left them in there as well because I wanted you to see on the back, I've gone ahead and used the adhesive sheets. So when you are using your adhesive sheets and you have all of this, some things will fall out, like those pop out really, really easy, you can see. But there's always going to be some that stick in there and especially around the center when you go to peel off your adhesive it is going to be pulling those loose little pieces out i hope you can see that okay so let me get that center out there you can always use that piece for something else too if you wanted to so let me move some of these because all of these are going to be falling down on this. So just peel it. I probably should do off to the side. Just peel it off. And then you have all those pieces that are coming out. And it's exposing the adhesive on the back. So it's like raining little pieces of die cuts right here. I think I got them all off there. And now I have this piece left, and you can see that almost all of those dots came out. You can leave the rest of them in there if you want, just for character. Or, if that drives you crazy, then you can just take the end of your Take Your Pick tool and poke those out. But I'm gonna leave them in. And I'm just gonna put this right here. Oops, there's a piece that was left in there. Uh-oh. Hold on. Let me get my take your pick tool out and pull that out. I didn't see that one little piece that was stuck in there. 
There we go. Okay. And then there's also a die cut for the center. So I just did the die cut with uh, cinnamon cider. And then I'm going to put a dimensional on the back of that one. You can press that down. Just put it there. And then on the other page, I went ahead and used, there's little bitty stickers, these little bitty flower stickers, just to fill in here and there. I went ahead, I found the ones that I was looking for last week <laughs> when I was cleaning up with all the paper. I'm like, there's the little cuts. So I'm just going to put little bitty stickers, the ones that coordinate, in all the little areas where there's just some white space to help fill that in. Let's see. Let's put one right there, too. We don't need a whole lot of stickers. We've got, we've got good, uh, a good layout here. And there you have it. There is your layout for the other page. And let, let me get, let me move this over and let me bring the other one. Moving this stuff out of the way. So hopefully we can look at both of these at the same time. Let me butt this page up against this one. Just getting it even there. And then let me see if I can move this up a little more. I don't know if both if y'all can see both of the layouts at the same time. But thank you, Stella. I can I'm on my tippy toes looking for comments. <laughs> but I I'm gonna take a picture of the second layout and post it in there and try to get a good picture of both layouts. Um, at the same time but there you have it you guys there is um, your second layout so when you open your scrapbook you have got both of your layouts that coordinate with each other and there's enough room for you know a pretty large picture over here and three smaller pictures here and then you've got a little bit of room over here uh, to do some journaling about what's going on on the page and of course you can always if you want to move things around and add another journaling box somewhere on this side um, you can do that as well but I hope you guys enjoyed this particular layout and then next week will be a completely different layout with completely different designer series paper and um, I do want to know though if there is a layout that you would like to see I'm always going to appreciate your suggestions. So if you want me to show you, um, you know, a wedding layout, um, what else is there? A wedding layout, a baby layout, any, any particular layouts, throw some suggestions at me and then I can certainly see what I can do because I want to be able to show you uh, things that I know that you will want to replicate. So, but this is how you can do layouts with Stampin' Up! Supply. So, thank you guys for joining me tonight, and I will see you guys for the layouts next Wednesday at 7 p.m., or you can join me Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, thank you guys. Bye-bye.